Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the Larson opening, uh, beginning with the move 1b3, and how to play the absolute best main lines against the Larson opening, beginning with the move pawn to e5. So anyways, if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. So b3, e5, uh, bishop b2, knight c6. So what do we do from here? These are the absolute tippy-top uh, best main lines that you're going to play with the black pieces, and you need to be able to follow the theory. So the game that everybody wants to emulate, the game that everybody wants to copy, the game that everybody wants to kind of replay, uh, was this very famous game. It was Bent Larson versus Boris Spassky, played back in 1970. Uh, that game continued pawn to c4, which, don't worry, you're never going to see it. <laughs> you're not, this was played back in 1970, nobody makes this mistake anymore. Uh, but the game continued knight f6, and then knight f3, uh, e4, knight to d4, bishop c5, Knight takes c6, takes, and then uh, Spassky gets this awesome clamp right in the middle of the board. Uh, castles queenside, and then Larson tries to break out with f4. The problem is Spassky can just ignore it and just start attacking. And then uh, after playing g3 to prevent queen h4 check, uh, Spassky just starts marching his pawn down the board. And there's apparently nothing that Larson can do to stop it. I actually used to do a lecture with this game. I used to show it, and I used to call it the little pawn that could, because the little pawn just keeps marching no matter what white does. Um, it goes h3, uh, h, h4, uh, h takes g4, h takes g3, uh, rook g1. We sacrifice the rook just to get the pawn up the board. Uh, g2, and then, of course, if rook g1, the game immediately ends with queen h4, king d1, queen h1. And uh, that's why Larson played Rick to f1, but unfortunately the game immediately ends uh, with queen h4, king d1, and then g takes f1 equals queen uh, is equally resignable uh, for the obvious reason of if bishop takes f1, uh, bishop to g4, king to c1, uh, check, and then mate. So that's the game everybody wants to play. That's the awesome game where you get the clamp in the middle, you get the kingside attack, you march the pawn down the board, and declare victory like a champion. Uh, the problem is, is of course, after knight to c6, everybody's seen this game. This game is 54 years old. It was played back in 1970. With modern computers, modern engines, and modern databases, any player that even plays at the club level is going to be familiar with this game and is going to avoid all the sort of normal tropes of this game. So they're all going to play e3. They're going to play something else. And then here, you should still just play knight f6. And now the two main moves that people play here are going to be the move knight to f3 and the move bishop to b5. Now, if they play knight to f3, you still have a little bit of hope of transposing back in to the Larson versus Spassky game. You can play e4, which I recommend. And then after knight to d4, if you want to, you can go for the transposition beginning with bishop c5. Now, of course, the downside of this is they can play something else. You know, they can play uh, after... Knight to c6, which is still probably the best move. There was actually one game that was played between Lopez and Napomniche that continued knight f5, but Napomniche ended up having an advantage in this game after g6, knight to g3, d5, d3, uh, queen e7, d takes e4, d takes e4, knight d2, bishop a3. He traded off the bishop on the long diagonal and then somehow managed to get a huge advantage after bishop f5 and then castles uh, queenside. And this is just major advantage black. He sacrificed a pawn, but the play that he has more than compensates for it. So probably knight f5, like after bishop c5, probably knight f5 isn't something to be feared. But the main move here is knight c6, and then we have dc6, taking away from the center. And now if they play uh, pawn to c4, uh, we have a direct transposition into uh, Larson versus Spassky, which would be great. Uh, we're never going to be that lucky. Nobody's ever going to do that. But if they do, just remember your Larson versus Spassky game. Uh, after d c6, everybody's going to play d4, uh, bishop d6, c4. And this position is considered just unclear, just castles kingside, approximate equality. So that's why you might want to choose something else against uh, knight to d4. Uh, just the move knight takes d4 is a little bit simpler. And I feel like it's easier for black to get some sort of advantage here. Like knight d4, bishop d4, then simply bishop e7. And then we have pawn to c4, castles, uh, knight to c3, b6. So very logical. All my pieces, pieces are going to play. Uh, so I'm following uh, two games here. Both of them are Napomniche games. I'm following Jabava versus Napomniche and Lope. And Lo uh, I'm, fo I'm following uh, Jabava versus uh, Napomniche. Actually, I think that's just... The main stem game, the uh, Lopez versus Napomniche game, uh, was the previous game with knight f5. So here we have uh, rook to c1, uh, bishop to b7, bishop e2, and then we have c5, d6, 
and then of course d5 and again this is jobaba versus napamache and that game continued cd5 knight d5 the point being that the e4 pawn is not hanging because if knight takes e4 we have knight to b4 and then we get that pawn right back on g2 uh, we shuffle our bishop back and then after d4 c takes d4 this position should just be slight edge black so after uh, we have knight takes d5 the best move is probably just castles kingside and now here we would have knight to b4 and we're holding that pawn on e4 again and now black actually gets a very similar clamp to that original game to that uh larson versus spassky game it's going to be a very similar type of clamp down uh, it goes rook b1 queen d7 bishop b5 bishop c6 bishop c6 queen c6 queen e2 rook a d8 uh, rook d1 and then knight d3 should be major advantage black and again that was jobava versus napomniche uh, played in riyadh back in 2017 although it did end in a draw so napomniche did not succeed in winning this game but According to Stockfish, this position is major advantage black starting from here. So this is definitely something that we want to try to emulate, and we're definitely getting that very similar uh, clamp that we saw uh, Boris Spassky get against Bet Larson in that Larson versus Spassky 1970 game. So anyways, uh, rewinding. So this knight f3 move is very possible. Easiest way to meet it, e4, knight d4, uh, knight takes d4, bishop d4, bishop e7. That's by far and away the simplest variation. What else did they do? Sometimes people like to play this move bishop to b5. This is the other move. Other than knight f3, bishop b5 is the other main line. What do we need to do against this? And this is maybe one of the reasons why sometimes I like to avoid playing e5 against the Larson. It's just because this next move, it is the theory. I am serious. It is a good move. It's very awkward. Uh, the move is bishop d6. This is really the best move. <laughs> um, just holding this e5 pawn. Now this breaks tons of opening principles, but keep in mind, White's playing the Larson variation. So White has already broken a lot of opening principles himself. He didn't take the center right away. He's just, he's, you know, he's playing very hypermodern. He developed his bishops before he developed his knight. He's offering up an exchange of bishop versus knight, even though the bishop really is worth more than the knight. So White's doing some weird stuff as well. And so bishop d6 is somewhat justified. The point being that if white ever does play bishop takes c6 and we take back with the d-pawn, now this bishop on c8 is not trapped. And also, we have the only central pawn. So it makes sense to defend that central pawn, even if it's with a super awkward move that seemingly breaks principle, where we put the bishop in front of our pawn, which blocks in our bishop and makes the rest of our development weird. But bishop d6 is sort of the right move. Now, the theory sort of gets weirder after this, but basically what black's trying to do is black is trying to fix the problem that he just created. And if he does this, he's going to end up with a better center. So that's the overall payoff. Uh, so the game kind of continues, uh, let's say, knight e2 or knight to a3. Those are kind of the two main moves. Now, against knight a3, the objectively best move is this move pawn to e4. This is the move I really recommend. It's also possible to play this other move, though. It's also possible to play knight a5 and just prevent the knight a3 knight from coming to c4 mechanically. And you end up with kind of this weird line. It goes bishop e2 because that bishop was going to get kicked, you know, with you know maybe c6 and d5 or something, or maybe a6. Uh, a6, because we need to leave the c6 square open for the knight, so the knight doesn't get trapped, but we don't want the knight coming into b5. So then we have knight f6, then queen e7, defends the pawn on e5, attacks the knight on a3. At this point, the knight has to go back home. And then we have castles. d4, e takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop e5. And then we have knight c3, knight comes back to c6, and then we have castles kingside. And the only thing I'm going to say about this is this position is unclear. Uh, in the past, like two different moves have been tried. Uh, d6 and rook d8 have both been tried. According to the engine anyway, rook d8 is a slightly better try. But it, needless to say, this position is unclear. So going back, uh, knight a5 is a goofy move. e4, way easier to play. Uh, after e4, uh, you're going to have a sort of uh, two main moves here. You're going to have knight to c4. And you're going to have knight to e2. So knight e2 is maybe a little bit easier to deal with than knight c4. Um, and I'll get back to it in a second. But let's go over knight c4 first. So knight c4, I'm going to follow this game, Ipata versus Karyakin. And Karyakin actually managed to equalize fairly quickly. Uh, after bishop to e7, uh, we have bishop c6, bc6, d3, castles kingside, knight e2, 
d5, so black's taking a big center, and he's got the bishop pair in exchange for a couple of the pawns. Uh, knight to d2, e takes d3, c takes d3, we have c5, uh, queen c2, rook e8, uh, with equality for black. But Karyakin managed to make his two bishops and his slightly better center, uh, slightly better central control, uh, worth more than the fact that he had two doubled pawns sitting on an open file. And Karyakin eventually went on to win. This was uh, Ipada versus Karyakin played in Dubai back in 2014. But the computer gives this as approximately level. So going back, uh, the other option after, other than knight c4, uh, the other option is that after e4, they could play the move knight to e2. So we've got another game uh, that we're following here. We're following Jobava versus Aronian that continued bishop to e5, queen to c1, Castles kingside, uh, pawn to h3, queen to e7, bishop c6, uh, bishop takes b2, queen takes b2, dc6, castles queenside, a5 with a decisive attack for black. Uh, castles queenside was probably a mistake, but anyways, after a5, you know, black just has this decisive attacking position. This was Jababa versus Veronian played back in Beijing back in 2012. And actually, it's interesting to note that if you just look at the computer, uh, after the move, just simply knight e2, and this is, again, the reason I recommend the move e4 against knight a3, after knight e2, the engine actually just gives slight edge black after bishop e5. It thinks already this is just slight advantage black. So bishop e5, queen c1, castles h3, queen e7, bishop c6, bishop takes b2, uh, queen takes b2, dc6. It's it's liking black here. And of course, after castles queenside, it gives decisive advantage black. After a5, black is getting this huge uh, queenside attack, especially, uh, essentially for nothing. And uh, black has good control of the center of the board. He has a bishop versus a knight, and this knight on a3 looks a little silly. Uh, so anyways, that's basically how we need to play uh, this b3, e5 against the Larson. Uh, we're going to be uh, meeting bishop b2 with knight c6, and then... Everybody is going to be playing e3. You're never going to see pawn to c4. <laughs> um, only in Larson versus Spassky and only in your dreams are you going to see pawn to c4. Uh, instead, everybody's going to play e3. And then basically you have to be prepared for these two lines. You have to be prepared for knight f3, in which case, again, I recommend just the simple e4. Uh, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop e7. And you're going to be, have to be prepared for this bishop b5, where you have to have preparation for this goofy-looking bishop d6 move uh, that sort of breaks principle. But the main thing to remember is after knight a3, just play e4, and you should be good. And, of course, after knight e2, just castle and play a6, and this bishop has nowhere to go. It can't go to c4, it can't go to d3, it's running out of squares, so it's going to have to exchange itself, and then you're just going to end up with this kind of exchange variation type position. And uh, the game that we're following here was actually uh, Wei Yi versus Sergei Karyakin back in China back in 2015. Uh, that continued d3, knight d7, e4, knight c5. Uh, Karyakin is just kind of equal here, nothing special. Knight d2 back to e6, uh, knight to c4, f6, queen d2, rook e8. But then eventually Karyakin gains some space. And then when he plants the knight on d4, at this point, this is slight edge black. And uh, he did eventually go on to win. Uh, this was Wei Yi versus Karyakin back in China in 2015. And that essentially covers all the theory. That covers everything that we should be playing against all of these moves. You know, this goofy bishop d6 move. Uh, knight e2, like I said, castles, and then a6 is going to be fine. And, of course, if they play the goofy knight a3, knight a5 is an option, but better is just e4, and then you're meeting uh, knight e2 with bishop e5, which is supposedly just slight edge black. So that's how you play e5 against the Larson variation, uh, b3, e5. And uh, that's basically all of the modern theory as it stands today and how you can get either equality or a slight edge with the black pieces, depending on how white proceeds from here. Well, anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.